George here, and welcome to Make It Chaos Orb video number two. So it's been quite the week. I had no intention of my video being posted on the Reddit forum for Path of Exile, and in the course of two days having more views than any video I've had in six months according to YouTube. That being said, um, I appreciate everyone who's decided to take a look, and of course everyone who subscribed because of it. So what I'm about to show you is this week's worth of effort towards this project. I was able to put in probably about, uh, I'd say, three to four hours of effort in modeling. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at what I've done so far. So the first thing I do is actually find some imagery of the Chaos Orb, load it in, bring it to Photoshop, write in it, straighten it out, and make sure everything looks good. I bring the source material into Maya. Uh, however, I realize that really what I want to do in this case is create a single face and then split it up because there's an inner face within an outer face with the Chaos Orb. Now, I only have the front reference material, and if you've been following the comments in a YouTube video, you'll realize that, unfortunately, don't have any higher reference material for me to use. So I'm forced to try to find some sort of, um, you know, something similar. So I find some, I think this is, I don't know if it's Caligula or someone else, but I find some sort of Greek or Romanesque statue, which I'm going to end up using for my side reference material. I start with the eye, um, just because I always tend to have the most problems with modeling out the eye, so I start with that shape first, I fan it out, uh, central from that structure, very soon I bring in a sphere to give me an idea of how the eyelid should actually wrap around that surface. And uh, I just continue to tweak those vertices for a while, making sure that everything looks right, bringing them back in, looking at both the side and front reference material. And obviously these, to these two don't marry well perfectly, but uh, it it's a good approximation for me to have something so I get the general features of the face down. Now I am using uh, subdivisional services every now and then, switching back between one, two, and three keys to take a look at what this is gonna look, out, look like later on. Um, at this point, I'm kind of beginning to mesh out the nose area, but I kind of stay away from that for a while. I want to get the head, the forehead, and of course the lips down next. So I go ahead and create a simple polygon tool for that area. I extrude those lips outwards to make the bottom and top portions of those lips, and then begin to shape them. And that was during the first session. And then any second now, yes, we go to the second session where I begin actually pulling the lip structures out uh, and sort of pushing and pulling so we get that nice sort of in and out motion with the lips. I seal those lips up because as I'm doing all of my, uh, my inserts and my cuts, I want to make sure I'm doing as much as possible with quads, at least this early on. So uh, as we can see, the lips now are be beginning to turn into the entire sort of uh, cheek area as well as upper and lower mouth. I unite those two areas by bridging the meshes together, and now I, you'll notice I still have that big gap where the nose should be. I'm going to tackle that very soon. I'm kind of delaying that a little bit. Now soon after that, I'm of course starting to bridge that nose down. I'm kind of dodging the nose at the moment. I know I've got to jump in there any second now, and that's what I do right here. Uh, I go ahead and extrude the mesh up, making that sort of under area of the bridge of the nose going straight up and into the rest of the geometry. And now I begin to pull that up into the forehead, and of course moving that down. Lots of tweaking going on. At this point, I'm getting a little bored of working on the nose, so I go ahead and kind of create this ribbon going around the head from the front to the back, just so I have a general structure put in. And I do the same for the back of the area as well. Then I jump into, of course, the uh, surrounding mouth area and the chin. I'm slowly uh, using uh, soft selection to tweak some of these areas. Then I jump back into the nose and begin actually carving out the nostril itself. From the nostril, I then in extrude upwards to create the actual cavity. I'm not exactly sure if this cavity is going to remain. It depends upon how it's going to react to the 3D printing process. A lot of tweaking going on here. As I model, I'm kind of, I don't have a lot of reference material here, so I'm just sort of going off of whatever's in my head. And then I look at it and then tweak things as I see. So here I've almost finished the nose area, the cavity's good. I'm laboring a little bit too long on this nostril area. Uh, for some reason I'm trying overly to uh, keep in quads when in the reality inside of that nostril triangles are just fine, the, the bad geometry really won't matter. 
So here I am just finalizing things, going through, manipulating uh, where the topology or the edge loops actually are, moving them back and forth to try to get quads in that area. Uh, several times I'm removing triangles that I create and then adding additional geometry and just, just tweaking things to make them look as best as I can, trying to keep that quad geometry as opposed to triangular. Now in this case, I am just recentering things up, and then I kind of looked at the geometry. I wasn't very happy with how it was looking to me, so I went and modified a lot of the facial features with soft selection. I start to bring out the forehead as well, start to round it out towards the back. The idea is that at this time, I'm, I'm pretty much ready to uh, solidify this model into a real head. Now, I'm kind of cheating here. What I'm doing basically is I'm making bridges across very large swaths of the under area. Because that's not a huge portion, I don't really need to worry about it. I'm, of course, tweaking continually, nonstop tweaking this, the facial structure. Um, there's actually a lot of problems right here that aren't notable yet until I actually mirror this object over to the other side. Here I am once again adjusting the forehead, making sure that I uh, round things out properly. And I just have good edge flow for this, for this mesh. Now, th there's no animation going on with this. It's just going to be a 3D print, but I'm still trying to make sure that things flow naturally across the face of the object. Of course, I'm tweaking once again the thickness of that face, making sure the chin is good. Now here I'm bridging across the entire area. And when I do that bridge, of course, I'm using the flow insert edge loop to kind of round things out and then just filling it in. I have triangulated a couple areas. I've merged vertices to make triangles. But the idea is most of that forehead is going to end up being lost underneath all the hair above it anyway. So there's really no point in worrying about it. Now I'm bringing down the back area, uh, bridging across those elements and inserting edge loops to round things out. And I'm pretty much ready to tackle the ear, although I feel like I have too much geometry on that side of the head, so I kind of move things about. And then once again, as I'm modeling, I'm constantly looking at the face, getting a sense of whether or not I like the shape it's taking on, and going back in there and using soft selection to move things around. This is the low poly approximation at this point. So I'm giving myself a little bit of leeway with not liking what I'm doing, just because when I bring this in a ZBrush later on, I'll have far more control over the finer nuances of the face, and I'll actually be able to move things around pretty easily with the tools over there. But for now, I'm just trying to get something that, to me, makes sense for the Chaos Orb. Now, I've gone, I've gone ahead and, and used the Create Poly tool to create an ear. There are many ways of creating ears. I'm trying a new method in this case where I just create a polygon that's ear-shaped. I try to cut it up into quads and then bridge it back into the overall structure of the head. Uh, I'm somewhat successful with this. It does take several revisions and uh, several um, passes of tweaking the polygons between the ear and the face. But for the most part, I get a lot of it done. There's a little bit too many, there's kind of too many polygons on that lower area of the ear. That's, that's a bit dense considering how many polys are at the top, but it's, it's not too bad. I'll, I'll deal with that later on. Here I'm just redistributing faces and edges. Now I'm moving around. Uh, I'm trying to insert that ear into the mesh itself, trying to get some of these polys to move around to make way for that ear structure. I really should have done the ear a lot earlier, at least gotten some kind of a cube in there. But because I've waited late in the game, there's a lot more tweaking I have to do, a lot more polys I have to account for, uh, and a lot of more edges that I need to deal with. I keep looking at that eye and I really don't like it. I think it looks too large, even though technically it kind of fits the size of what this object is. It just to me looks a little bit too cartoonish, so I'm continually tweaking that. Here I'm just rounding out the bottom half of the face as well, and now I'm going to duplicate the face or mirror it. And when you mirror an object, you find so many faults in your mesh that you didn't see naturally. So here I'm thickening things out. A lot of times, especially along that mirror edge, you see so many problems. So I'm pulling these, these objects away. I'm thickening the nose. I'm thickening the brow. And I'm also trying to give it a little bit of emotion. Um, I'm, I'm moving the brow down a bit to make it a little bit more uh, angry. Now I'm going to do a quick look at... Um, what I expect this thing to look at the end of the day. So I went ahead and split it, filled the edges, du duplicate it, shrunk it down, and this gives you a sense of kind of what I can expect from the Chaos Orb being printed. I I'm still trying to figure out basically how I'm going to slice this thing up when I go to print it. That's my progress on this project for this week. Next week, uh, I I definitely going to finish the model. I'm probably going to dive into ZBrush. Thanks again. Hope you enjoyed it. So long. Bye.